notification on my phone before I actually we're live, we are live. <laughs> on my screen. Live. Yay. Thanks. Good morning, everybody. Happy, happy day. I'm going to pop here on my phone to uh, find us live on our Facebook page, Brentwood Inspired Living Center. And uh, there we are. Let me just get the comments going now. Yay. Okay. I like that. When we, I see we're, we're live and it's all running smoothly. Yay. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Um, just so, so thrilled to be here this morning. Um, we are just, we're just enjoy, enjoy. Blessings, everybody. I see you logging in. I see your numbers logging in, but I don't see your profile picture or your name until you leave me a comment. So leave me a comment. I love to see that you're here. Good morning, Dennis. Good morning, Peggy. Dennis says, howdy. It's his, uh, his greeting to us every Sunday morning and it always makes me smile. <laughs> Thank you everybody for joining us this morning. Um, as you enter this sacred space, I just invite you to, to open up, open up and release tension, lean into the love. Good morning, Pat. You're home. Yay. She says, hello from Brentwood. <laughs> That means she's home from Oregon. Good morning, Sharon. Nice to see you. So grateful for everybody tuning in with us this morning. My name is Amy Van Ling, and I'm the spiritual director here at this incredibly vibrant Brentwood Inspired Living Center. And um, I welcome you. We welcome you into this spiritual community uh, where we just, we love you. We value you. Thank you for being here. Good morning, Stephen. I'm so glad to see you here. Very, very happy to have you here. Nancy says, hi, everyone. Happy Father's Day. Yes, it's Father's Day. Jim and Siggy are here. They said, good morning, loved ones. Yes, yes, loved ones. Happy Father's Day. Everybody who um, is a father figure in some way, shape, or form. Good morning, Penny. Nice to see you. So grateful to have everybody here joining us. I called my dad this morning. He's in Florida. So he's, he's three hours ahead. So it's easy for me to make that, you know, 6, 6 a.m. phone call to him. <laughs> it's a good time for him. And I was recalling one of my favorite memories of my dad, which was, you know, he's a very businessman and always working in his head a lot. But this one time I really felt him um, so gentle. We were going somewhere. And I was, I was very young still, and I was sitting in the front seat. This is back before seatbelts or rules about kids sitting, you know, in the back seat. And I was in the front seat. He realized I couldn't see over the dashboard. And he said, let me run inside real quick. And he came back with a big stack of phone books. Some of us remember the phone books. Back in the day, we had big <laughs> yellow pages. And he stacked them up on the front seat. This is before booster seats. So now I'm, I'm letting you know how old I am. And I sat on top of the phone books, and I could see over the dash. And um he didn't even remember that memory, but I remember it. So interesting what children remember, right? So happy Father's Day. Good morning, Florence. Good morning, Randy. Happy Father's Day. Yay, yay, everybody. Uh, if you're visiting us for the first time, we are so glad that you found us. Please reach out uh, to us via email, uh, Facebook Messenger. Let us know about you. Let us know that you were here. We love to connect with you. We are truly a community of souls. Uh, on this life journey together. We're loving one another, supporting one another, and reminding each other of our life. And that's really fun. Good morning, Doug. So nice to see you here. Yay. Yay, everybody. Um, I have my phone here. This is where I'm checking you out, seeing you log in. Yeah, I'm so glad. Angelica, Jan, and I welcome you. Welcome you into this sacred, sacred space. Uh, today, we have Reverend Angelica Schaefer. She's back with us. She's a gentle and heart-centered soul who brings us such peace through her loving vibration. You will see it's, it's really, really profound. Angelica's message today is falling open when the world falls apart. I love that message this morning for us. Good morning, Kathy and Luinda and Bonnie and Ginny. Yay! So today we also have a workshop and I was getting really excited about it as Angelica was um, giving us some description before we logged on here to Facebook Live. So she will in a little while tell us more about it. It's raise your frequency through singing, chanting, toning, inspiration. Uh, she's gonna teach us a lot of powerful Sanskrit uh, prayers and I really look forward to it and invite you to join us. Invite everybody. Our workshops are always open to everybody. So invite friends, send the link to family members. Anybody can pop on with us. It's not just for Brentwood Inspired Living Center people. It's for everybody. 
And we love to share the love out there. So feel free to send that link to whomever you know. Good morning, Kathy. Good morning, everybody. Um, also, I will be putting the, the mantras and the chants up in the chat on the Zoom link for the workshop. But if you'd like a copy of them to have and, and print in your house before the workshop, either text me, email me, uh, Facebook message me, and I will email those over to you before the workshop. The workshop will be at 1130. The Zoom link is on our homepage, brentwoodilc.org. You'll see Angelica's uh, face, the picture, and then right to the right, you'll see the link to the workshop. So just pop in there at 1130. We will be there. And we have our wonderful Jan Knight. She's our dedicated, uh, beloved board president. She will be sharing our selected inspirational reading uh, this morning and our prayer of plentitude. And it is always delightful to have this beautiful soul with us. Thank you, Jan. We love you so much. Thank you all for coming together to act activate our sacred space with this loving vibration. Good morning, Verona. Yay! <laughs> How are you on here? So oh, you, you guys start a little later than us, huh? <laughs> I love it. I just, oh, I love our family, our extended family. We extend out so far and wide. It just brings me so much joy. Good morning, Dave and Julie. Dave says, good morning, Angelica, Amy, Jan, and our soulful community. Yes, indeed. Good morning, mm -hmm. beloveds. Our theme this month is forgiveness. Um, and it's been, it's been really rich, a rich, rich theme. Uh, and if you or anyone you know would like love affirming, life affirming prayer, please reach out to us. We have an easy way to submit a prayer request through our website. Uh, it's just in the drop down menu from Connect. And I think it's just submit a prayer, prayer and healing page, and then submit a prayer. And that goes to our prayer team. And we all pray over those uh, prayer requests and, and keep them in loving, tender, warm hands for you. Pat says, Sorry, I can't make the workshop. Um, Bay Area has a gathering. Da, 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 da. Hi, Verona. See you later. Okay, we will miss you. We will miss you. Um, what else? What else do we have going on? Oh, so next month our concert will be on July 10th in the park uh, at Veterans Park. It is such an amazing time to connect. I encourage, invite everybody to to be there. Remember to let me know if you'd like uh, to meet before the concert. The concert starts at 12:30, but if you'd like to meet um, beforehand at 11, then let me know. And we will definitely organize that uh, for you, for us. Um, what else is I gonna mention today? Oh, Brentwood Inspired Living Center selects different organizations to contribute to every year. And you can find all those organizations and the links to donate if you uh, choose on our giving back page. We find some pretty uh, wonderful places to contribute to. and. Um, check it out. That's on our giving back page on our website. Okay, let me see. Everybody's logging in. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started and um, enliven our space with our mission statement. I invite you to place your hand on your heart or take a deep breath or whatever you do to get grounded in and centered in. We are an open, heart-centered, spiritual community honoring the one presence within us. We welcome all to connect, grow, and expand in wisdom, compassion, and love. So today we're gonna to have a slightly different order because uh, Angelica's a second song is gonna be a guided meditation, which we're gonna um, push to right before our talk. So we're just gonna move things around just slightly. You won't hardly notice a difference. So today we're going to begin with our community song. And so Angelica also wanted to mention that sometimes when you wear headphones or earbuds or something like that, it's um, it's a little better for the sound. And if you wanna say any more about that, Angelica, go, go for it. I'm gonna hand the screen over to Angelica now for our community song this morning. Well, thank you for this wonderful introduction. Uh, so yes, you know, when we communicate with words or music, the sender, and the quality of the sending is just as important as the receiving and the quality of the receiving. And so I, you know, studied for hundreds of hours to make the sound much, much better on Zoom. But the way you receive it, either with some nice speaker externally or some earbuds, uh, would make, th make it more enjoyable for you, just because it's not much better quality than the built-in computer speakers. 
but I know some of us are not so techy, and so just do the best you can. And this song is, I chose, it's by Sue Riley, and it's called I Choose Love. And so I would like you to sing with me if you just sing that one line, I choose love, and really do it with a great, powerful I intention. I choose love. When we do that, even when sometimes things hurt, it is so incredible, the power of that statement. I choose love. I choose the high road. So these are not just uh, simple little words. Peace in my life is growing because I choose love. Love's always present, it's what I'm made of. I choose love. We are a part of each other. We are one. One tie that binds us, that can't be undone. I choose love. Peace in my family is growing because I choose love. Love's always present, it's what we're made of. I choose love. We are a part of each other. We are one. One loving family sharing one son. I choose love. Peace for our planet is growing because I choose love. Let love be present, it's what we're made of. I choose love. We are a part of each other. We One choice unites us, let this be the one. I choose love. I choose love. I choose Oh, thank you so much, Angelica. I haven't heard that song in a while. I really missed it. Thank you. It's such a, such a beautiful song. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that with us this morning. All right. I'm going to hand the screen over to Jan this morning for our inspirational reading. Thank you, Jan. All right. Good morning, everyone. Isn't it wonderful to have Angelica here? I'm so jazzed and can't wait for the workshop. So the inspirational reading is uh, powerful this morning and it particularly important to me. I did a bunch of research and uh, was looking up uh, uh, Jampolsky, Jerry Jampolsky, who had written, who has written a book called Forgiveness. And so I couldn't find the book in my bookshelf, amazingly enough. So I started looking online and I found um, a blog from his son uh, Dr. Lee Jampolsky, and it was written April 11, 2020, and it's entitled A Lesson from Oprah and My Dad. And Dr. Lee Jampolsky is the son of Jerry Jampolsky, who is the, Jerry is the author of two books that profoundly influenced me back, way back in the 70s and 80s. And um, the books were Love is Letting Go of Fear and Forgiveness. And I'm sure that some of you know these books. 
He's the founder also of a, an organization called Attitudinal Healing, which I have been following for years. And um, he passed away December 30th, 2020, which I did not know. He was 96 years old. So here it is, a lesson from Oprah and from my dad, The Road Ahead with COVID-19. It was written April 11th, 2020. Oprah said, <clears throat> it was one man's definition of forgiveness that changed my life. That man was my dad, Dr. Jerry Jampolsky, 95, and founder of Attitudinal Healing. In discussing her 25 years of hosting her show and 30,000 guests, Oprah said dad's particular life lesson on forgiveness always stood out from the rest. It really means letting go of the past that we thought we wanted, dad said. We can't really change the past, so it means coming back to the present. Reflecting on dad's lesson decades later, Oprah said, that was a transcendent moment for me in my life. He said, forgiveness is giving up the hope that the past can be any different. Forgiveness is giving up the hope that the past could be any different. We can apply Oprah's 2016 summation of dad's wisdom to the COVID-19 crisis. You think forgiving means accepting what has happened to you, she says. Well, it is accepting that it has happened to you not accepting that it was okay for it to happen. It's accepting that it has happened and now what do I do about it? When I got that, I think it took me to the next level of being a better person because I don't hold grudges for anything or any situation and neither should you. It's letting go so that the past does not hold you prisoner it doesn't hold you hostage. Individually and collectively, let us not allow this challenge, COVID-19, to hold us prisoner or hostage, but inspire us to create meaningful and beautiful lives through love, kindness, and generosity. So <laughs> to me, that, that was an amazing message reflected long ago and now repeated by Oprah back um, in 2016 and then brought forward to 2020 by uh, Dr. Lee Jampolsky. So Amy has the link for a two minute clip with an, uh, this interview. So I thought you might be interested. We'll put it on the, we'll put it on the screen. You. Yeah, that's beautiful. I will do that. Thank you. And it, yeah, thank you so much, Jan. And I loved hearing that because at the beginning of the month, I found all these different forgiveness quotes. And I've been posting them in our connection group. If you're not in our connection group, it's a Facebook group. And it's where we do a little more chatting during the week. And I've been posting these uh, forgiveness quotes. And I have that one in the queue. But now it has such substance behind it. I have context for it. So thank you. Thank you for finding that story and sharing it with us this morning. Appreciate you so much. Okay, I'm going to hand the screen back over to Angelica for our song, another song this morning. Thank you, Angelica. Yeah. And this song, I, um, I can't say I write songs. I more receive them. Um, and it's called In This Moment. So it's actually perfect for what you just shared, Jan, and that was just so powerful. Thank you so much. So um, it's an original that I, I received in 2000 for actually the wedding of a friend. And she was very much connected to Ajay Shanti. Just, so she was really into life this way that I, and she helped to write the words, my friend Anna Coulter. <laughs> There is nothing to be There is nowhere to go 
There is nothing to fear. There is only this moment. All desires of tomorrow have vanished, and all the blames of yesterday do not exist. Today is all there is. This moment, life is what it is. In this moment, doing what it wants to, flowing without effort, moving without questioning, unfolding its own rhythm. It is birthing, blooming, dying, all at once. In this moment, there is nothing to seek. Here is stillness and peace. In the silence between words, in the center of the storm, all desires of tomorrow have vanished, and all the blames of yesterday do not exist. In the love of all creation. In this moment, life is what it is. In this moment, doing what it wants to, flowing without effort, moving without questioning, unfolding its own rhythm. Birthing, blooming, dying, all at once. In this moment, in the love of all creation, in this moment, this love is all there is. This moment, this moment. Wow, so beautiful. Thank you, Angelica. I actually rewrote the words a little bit for this program. You know, uh -huh. as we grow and evolve, it seems yeah. like the songs do too. <laughs> yeah, right? Wow. Yeah, that's true. Very important message. Mm -hmm. We can rewrite the song exactly. as we grow and evolve. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much for you, your presence. And see, I told you all the, the piece she just vibrates is so wonderful to, to be in the presence of. Thank you for being with us. Okay, beautiful Jan, I'm going to hand the screen over to you for our uh, prayer of plentitude this morning. Thank you, my love. Good morning again, everyone. And I invite you now to uh, take a deep breath with me. Take a deep breath into your heart and just hold it there. Let it swirl around. Be in the moment with that breath. And now release it out to the world as we come together for our prayer of plentitude, our prosperity blessing. Opening our hearts and minds to the one spirit, the light, the infinite mind, knowing that there is only one power and one presence in our life and that is the life of spirit. We affirm that we are one with spirit, 
And there is no one, there is nothing that is separate from this oneness. We believe that, we know that truth. We are one with infinite mind that has created all that is. And we know that the divine qualities of peace, of power, of plenty, of wisdom are already within us, inside us, each of us. And we embrace those qualities now. And we go forth in the truth of who and what we are, saying yes to our prosperity, saying yes to our harmony and our health and our order and our love. We affirm that our beloved community's consciousness is expanding beyond our wildest dreams and imaginings. We are dynamically moving and changing with confidence and unanimity and joy. And we step forward with love and anticipation, fully supporting our amazing expansion with our time and our talents and our treasures. And with the greatest gratitude, we accept this transformation of consciousness for ourselves and for our community. And we know that this is done. We know it. And we believe it and we give thanks for this glorious thanks and now we release it we let it go and we let spirit do its perfect work we trust the universe to provide for us and it is done and so it is so another part of what i do is just a reminder Amy has reminded us. Now I'm going to send a couple of few little reminders to you. Let's stay connected because we're doing such a marvelous job of it. Let's stay connected. Let's keep our community alive. Let's keep our community prosperous and expanding and join us with our friends and our entire community on Sunday mornings, like right now, and on Facebook Live with our wonderful musicians, amazing musicians and exceptional speakers every one of them coming from all over the world, different places. And join us on Zoom after our service at 1130. Today we have a workshop. We're so excited about it with Angelica. It's going to be amazing. Don't miss it if you can. And then don't forget to visit our website because that's where all the information is. Our Facebook page and our Facebook connection pages also and read the weekly connection, read the weekly connection for all the latest updates. And join us with our small groups. We have book clubs going on. We have a, a, a storytelling, tell your story group that's going on. That, that particular one is closed for now, but things like that are always popping up. We're starting new groups, so join us. And uh, don't forget, connect in the park every second, su every second Saturday of the month. Amy, Amy mentioned it, July 10th will be the date. And uh, remember our expansion project. We're on the move. Join our community in offering a separate and expansive donation because this is, this is how we're moving forward is with your time, your talents, and your treasures, and we're all moving together. So you can use PayPal, you can use Zelle. And uh, then don't forget to join us for our link on every Friday morning at 10. And we affirm our expansion together for 10 minutes. And we also do it on Monday nights at seven o'clock. So those are all the things that are happening. And then there are all the other connections that we're making with each other throughout the week. So stay connected. We love you. Thank you. Thank you so much, beautiful Jan. We appreciate you and all the reminders because sometimes we need reminders and uh, we forget about something going on. We go, oh yeah, that's right. I wanted to be there. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Love and appreciate you so much. Thank you for joining us this morning and bringing your, your beautiful presence and essence to us, to our community. Uh, you are dearly loved and greatly appreciated. Thank you. We'll see you on this other side, the Facebook, the Facebook side. Where is everybody? I'm checking back in here. <laughs> see everybody here. Okay. Love you so much. I am so grateful to have Angelica with us. And it always makes me smile to think about the last time that she was here because I was in a hotel room in Wyoming. And I don't know if you all remember, but the housekeeping continued coming to my door um, 
three times while we were on together on zoom together once before we went live and then once when we went live and then once in the workshop and it was just um it was so funny and then jen angelica called me later and she said oh you know you think there, there must have been such a high vibration in that room and she was just drawn to it. and i go i bet you're right <laughs> It was so funny because that never that didn't happen anywhere else. But it was a fun day and a fun time. And I we are so appreciative of, of you, Angelica, and saying yes to be here with us. Um, we deeply enjoy time with you. Uh, I know I'm speaking for everybody. So I'm going to go ahead and um, what am I doing? I don't <laughs> I'm touching my phone here and making a post. That's not what we're going to do right now. Right now, I'm going to read Angelica's bio to you so you get to know her a little bit better. And then I'm going to pray us in and then I'm going to hand the screen over to Angelica for our guided meditation this morning and our morning message. Reverend Angelica Schaefer, originally from Germany, has shared sacred music and seminars worldwide with her interfaith ministry. She offers healing frequencies through her voice and instruments and nurtures our hearts with bahans, musical meditations, inspirational songs, and prayers in Sanskrit, English, and other languages. Very powerful presence. Thank you. Thank you so much for being with us. I invite you, I invite everybody to move into a space right now of prayer. Let us take this precious and sacred moment to ground into the truth of our being. Noticing, acknowledging the holy breath that breathes us and just basking in this gratitude. So thankful for the most high presence that we are the opportunity to gather together in this conscious, loving community. Let's step into and remain in this infectious atmosphere of love, activating this field of consciousness and awareness, this space of connection with infinite power and possibility. So thankful and grateful that we can claim our unfoldment of excellence emanating the, the, the sweetness of God. We cover Angelica in our love and our blessings. And we clear our hearts and our minds now to hear the divine message that is flowing through her. And we thank her for saying yes. And so it is. Amen. Ashe, namaste. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. I'm going to hand the screen over to Angelica now. Thank you so much, Angelica. Thank you, Amy, and thank you to this vibrant community. It's always a joy for me. It's mutual to be with you and share with you. Um, so just sit as comfortable as you can. And if you want to, you could close your eyes. And this is the experiential part of my message today. And just taking some nice deep breaths just being aware of the breath because it is the doorway to our beingness and it's also the doorway to this moment we always are here when we focus on the breath present and so the theme is opening and surrendering and letting go and in a way, letting go is a form of forgiveness. And we let ourselves fall into love, into life. And we drop the argument with life in space. Simply energy. a spacious presence and become aware that this spacious presence is also permeating the body and the world of thoughts in your head and all the emotional qualities you experience and imagine 
that this spacious presence that you are does not evaluate anything. Let your body, your sense of self, melt into that neutral awareness. You are the star, the planet, and the empty space. You are the ocean and the wave. You are the open sky and the cloud floating through it. You are local and non-local. You are form and you are space, all at the same time. moment, bring your awareness to the density of the body-mind, this form that seems more solid. And now bring your awareness back to the openness of the spacious presence that you are also. And this awareness is like a flashlight, wherever you point it that will be seen and experienced and emphasized. So I want to invite you to do this exercise, this meditation, this awareness and presence for the rest of your days here on the planet in this form. To remember to honor the form and the experience here fully but also to remember that you are that spacious presence, that you are formless as well as in the form. And to make that such a real experience that you can never get caught up completely in the drama of the forms, changing, always changing. That your connection with that spacious presence of your being is so powerful that it permeates your mind, your body at all times. Your awareness makes the difference. So we are falling open. We contract and expand all at the same time. We are infinitely small and infinitely big all we are all of it at the same time and it what is moving is our awareness so where we focus that flashlight that is where our experience will be emphasized So just enjoy not making anything wrong, any experience, not any sensation in your body. Just enjoy being present with it, kind of curious. Oh wow, this infinite being is experiencing this right now. Oh, and it's changing again. What an amazing dance and play. And you are also the lover and the beloved. And they're playing this wonderful play of being separate so they can find each other and enjoy each other. Forgetting that they're ever the same and that there is no split. And we honor that journey, seeming journey, from the one source into infinite expressions and back to the one source. 
And with that, just taking a few more deep breaths, conscious, conscious of your beingness. And without losing this state, without losing this awareness, we go into a phase of the program here that is a little bit more wordy, but let us be have those words be infused with that energy that we just experienced together. So the, the title, uh, Falling Open, When the World Falls Apart, I got that from a book title from by Amoda Ma. She's a beautiful spiritual teacher. And it really captures captured my attention because it has a sort of a an opposite polarity in it already. And what that polarity is is falling usually brings with it sort of images of out of control, maybe fear or pain. It is usually in, in our minds not a good thing. But then when we think of open, what comes to mind is softening. Everything is softening. Everything is all right, relaxing, turning towards, leaning into, and not rejecting anything. And so I'd like to share this quote by Eckhart Tolle. And he's saying, you are not in the universe. You are the universe, an intrinsic part of it. Ultimately, you are not a person, but a focal point where the universe is becoming conscious of itself. What an amazing miracle. And I was going to do this right towards the end of the um, meditation, but I forgot, so I'll do it now. It's a, a Sanskrit prayer mantra that fits this expression. It basically says, my source, you are everything. You are my wealth, you are my relationships, you are everything, no exception. Twamiva Mata Chapita Twamiva Twamiva Panduscha Saka Twamiva Twamiva Vidya Travinam Twamiva Twamiva Sarvam Mama Deva Deva Twamiva Sarvam Mama Deva Deva You know, they say that um, a picture is worth a thousand words, and I think also a mantra is worth a thousand words. When you feel the vibration of this language, you know, it's the universe can be seen in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. And the Sanskrit language was perceived by the ancient seers in transcendent states of consciousness. And so these sounds are actually the very essence of creation, and they are so powerful, they can change the weather, they can change the physical expression of source energy completely. And there are different prayers, different mantras for different purposes. And I put together a program to give a complete tune-up in the workshop, all with these po the most powerful Sanskrit mantras that I could find. and. 
So you'll be in for a real intense, um, I guess, uh, a tune-up, you could say, a shift in frequency. And so basically, I would like to invite us, the invitation in this program here and for the rest of our lives is to increase our experience of a genuine openness with all of life. And I might have showed you this slide before, it's my favorite picture, because it captures the essence of that openness so well. This little fellow does not worry about the future or think about the past. It's just such, such a beautiful image. <laughs> and we want to be able to be objective with the obstacles that might still be in our experience, internal as well as external, and welcome them and grow from them and ultimately be free with the lessons and the obstacles, with all the curriculum that our lives is, are bringing us, whatever they may be. So that is the intention with this message this morning and in my life in general. And I also would like to do a, a blessing. You know, we have so much power in within our beings. We often forget that. And so let's for a moment, this circle of friends is at the local river here many years ago. I always give a, a, a birthday concert and I did it across the river at, on the cliff for my friends. And they we were holding hands and it's just a symbolic, beautiful uh, circle of friendship and connection and truth. So let's bless each other. Let's bless this community. We have the power to do that. And let's really bring this blessing from our deepest source, our deepest being, our deepest heart to each other, into each other's lives. And so when we think of falling, like I said, we think of out of control. Oh my goodness, there might be a lot of fear of that. And when we think of opening, this is perhaps a very good image that would depict this kind of openness. We are a beam of light. We turn into light and this light connects with the web of life, with all of the whole universe. And so opening is turning toward life in all its different forms, not just the pleasant, but also that which is painful. And what it does, it this attitude, this shift in attitude, as Jan was sharing about uh, Dr. Jampolsky, uh, is a shift in attitude, it's a shift in paradigm. It's on all levels, it's psychological, spiritual, emotional, and a whole new human exploration. Because we have been, so far, for a lot of our lives, been more like this. We focus so much on the problems and we couldn't see that it's our awareness and attention on all that is wrong and the resistance to it and the argument with life. That is what kept us trapped. There was never a prison. The, the cage is always wide open. <laughs> I just love this picture. It is so powerful. And of course, when we feel like that, we think of open, what, what do you mean? What are you talking about? I wonder who, who will free me. And I used to do that in my former life is looking for, you know, a guru, a, a saint, a sage, looking for someone to rescue me from myself, rescue me from this condition of the mind. And it took quite a while, but once you see what's going on, it's you just smile with compassion. So let's for a moment practice this beautiful forgiveness. And sometimes it's difficult to see in ourselves. So let's think of someone in our lives that might be doing this, just focusing on only the 
the hardness and the problems and is very trapped in their minds. And let's just have some compassion for that beautiful being that doesn't realize the solution, doesn't realize that they are free already. And so when we have compassion and forgiveness, knowing that everyone is doing the best they can, then we can also, that slowly sinks into our own being and we can forgive our own minds for being in this state, in this state of restriction. And um, so basically human beings are very terrified of uncertainty. <laughs> so we kind of peek across you know, the edge and then we go, ah, no, no thanks. I, I don't think I, I'm ready for the unknown, <laughs> for the uncertainty. This vast universe, it's way too scary. <laughs> and so what we actually are doing, uh, what we did do in the past is we got comfortable on the edge. We made a cafe on the edge and we had lots of nice dinners and good company and wonderful cappuccinos and lattes and chai. And we just got very comfortable kind of ignoring that the ocean is always gnawing at that edge and undermining that seeming security that we so cling to and so crave. And life on the level of form is intrinsically, well, the Buddhists say dukkha, which means unsatisfactory, but it's also intrinsically by its very nature prone to change. It has to, it will always change like a kaleidoscope. But you know how in the kaleidoscope, there are all these same parts and they're always just forming a different picture, but they're always the same particles within the kaleidoscope. The parts never change, but the picture always changes. And so, so we did the best we could and it's actually through that discomfort when we finally peek over the edge or heaven forbid, we might even jump over the edge that we actually start really growing and shifting and evolving. And every species that I've studied about, whether it's a lizard or a monkey or any creature or human beings, they grow when they are really squeezed and when they have no other option. And you know, that's just the way the mind is. And so it's that edge of growth, of evolution, both on a personal level as well as collectively. And, you know, when 2020 came along with all these challenges, that's what that was a call to do. There was no other choice. There is no other choice. And there will not be another choice. But to meet it. And it also gives us a chance to go to something fresh and something new, something different, a different way to relate with life. But, you know, alas, this does not come natural to us. So our inner children are often those images on the left. Ah, <laughs> temper tantrum. No, I don't want this. No, I can't handle it. <laughs> And then what we want to do is become aware that those children are there and not make them wrong at all, but just really hold them in your heart. My goodness, you know, there's so much conditioning. The conditioning is so, so strong that we just couldn't do it differently. So you just become compassionate towards all those aspects of the psyche. And so another example of falling open is when I was in India many times and I sometimes got caught this one particular time in a, this kind of situation. But I was not in a bus. I was not in a big glory, but in one of those little tiny li little yellow things. Those are little auto rickshaws. They look like this. <laughs> and you literally get squished into uh, in between buses and trucks and your life is on the line and the sounds and the smells and the, it's totally overwhelming. It's so incredible. So you have a choice. You can either um, have a nervous breakdown or you can let go. And so I allowed myself to fall into this chaos, into this impossible situation. And it was hours that we were in this. And so I had... 
I experienced the most incredible meditation and stillness ever in this situation because that was the only choice that made sense, you know. And so I was able to overcome that PTSD that I grew up with and that nervousness and anxiety. And I was able to go to deeper, much deeper into the core of my being where it is the center of the storm always. And that is this image shows that really beautifully. And yes, the nervous system is afraid, you know, and the body mind is very afraid of its demise, which will inevitably come. There is no holding it back. Um, and so that is just what we experience on this level. And that's totally all right. So we want to forgive that too and really embrace it with compassion. But our soul is totally thrilled with whatever we experience, even being nailed on a cross. You know, even that can open us more to the ultimate possibility of going beyond death, going beyond suffering. And that was the ultimate forgiveness, you know, to say, okay, you can do this to my body, whatever, you know, it's fine if you need to do this, but you cannot kill who I really am. And I will prove that to you. So very powerful, very powerful lessons. And a little story from um, a lady in the Middle East that I heard on one of Lynn McTaggart's intention experiments. Uh, she talked about her experience in this war, in this bombing, that her, their houses were shaking and the flames were all around them and that people were scrambling to the bomb shelters. This is just recently. And she said, I am an ambassador of peace. I know that peace exists in the quantum and that I can bring that in. And so her and her two daughters and her husband stayed as a powerful, courageous stand for peace. And I am guessing that with that incredible act of truth, courage, commitment, that she saved a lot of lives and had a big, huge influence on that situation. I have no doubt in my mind. And so what is surrender, surrendering to? You know, what are we surrendering to? A falling into. It's we're falling into something inside of us that is greater than our fears. It is an incredible stillness, just like I experienced in India. But it is not automatic because the, we, we did not grow up with much trust in life, some of us, most of us maybe. We grew up with a lot of um, messages that that were more leaning towards fear and separation so the conditioning is very very strong and the default of the body mind is to go into fear and freak out and resistance and that's all fine that can all be there but to remind ourselves every day that if anything other than peace is present is to just be fully present with that and embrace it with compassion and then I choose love and loving the hurts home loving them all home as they come one by one sometimes many come at the same time and then it's chaos but being willing to love them home it's so powerful and then there's another very important thing of falling open in communication. And it's about, you know, we humans have a very peculiar feature. We get upset, very upset, to the point of where we murder each other, just about differences of opinion. Because everyone feels that they are so right, but we're like the blind people touching the elephant. Everyone is touching a different part that feels very different, different texture, <laughs> very different. 
And so then we argue. Well, we are all wrong and we're all right. Each of us has one little piece of the truth. So if we could just listen to someone who has a, an opinion that might offend us or a belief that might offend us or that is so foreign to our own belief system or nature, if we could just make a decision to go into our heart, to listen from the heart. And just like Lynn McTaggart did this exercise in one of her master classes where she had people of opposite beliefs, like this subject, she chose a hot button subject at the time, it was the wall between Mexico and US. And she let someone for the wall speak and, and we were to listen, but watch our own reactions and just simply be with whatever was going on inside of us and take responsibility for what is in us, what comes up in us and simply listen with openness and just allow the other person to express themselves fully. And then she, most of the people on that, in that master class were probably against the wall. And then she allowed someone to speak that was for the wall. And that lady talked about how so many children had disappeared in her town and the border near the border. And she said, when the, when the wall gets built, our children are going to be more safe. And so our hearts kind of melted because we realized everyone has a good reason for believing what they're believing. And our experience, you know, even though it's relative truth, it's still, it's our truth. And we simply, as human beings, to make any progress, we need to learn to, to open, to fall open into the discomfort when someone expresses another opinion. You know, not to attack each other on Facebook or whatever we do, or throw bombs on each other. So to fall open into the differences. So practicing trust and opening all the time, it until it becomes a new operating system. You know, just like on the computer, we keep reprogramming. We, we're basically just reprogramming. And that is so important to do that, to stay aware, to stay awake, to stay with it, to not fall asleep into old habits again. And so in heart fluency, uh, a method that is the beautiful synthesis of neuroscience and of uh, a mindfulness meditation. Oh, something is going on. Oh, I stop, I drop, drop in, and I open. Um, so when s that is, we do that whenever something challenging comes up, which can be some days, it can be a lot. And to allow it, to not judge it, that it is held in what you also are, that space, that ocean, that sky. So we are, we are experiencing with the sensations, even if it's pain in the body. And we say, oh, dear one, oh, sweetheart, here we are. Ouch, here we are. I'm here with you. And Sebastian is a mystic from uh, South America, and he is just a beautiful man. He has a, a clairvoyant and audience a relationship with uh, Mother Mary and Yeshua. And he said one of the messages of Mother Mary to him, she appeared to him and she said, not love everybody, but she said, let yourself be loved fully. Let yourself be loved. And then, you know, automatically loving life and everyone else comes from that. But that is really the most important point is to allow the love, even when we feel so flawed as humans, when we feel so full of conflict and separation, but to allow the love fully, more fully every day, every day. And so with that, I would like to do a little uh, exercise um, in its havening. I think I've done it before with you. You just touch yourself like this, just gently. And also 
you know, your face if you want, or the palms of your hand. Those are all methods to calm down the nervous system to synchronize the brain. And when I did affirmations in the past, the subconscious mind says, yeah, right. If I'm in pain and I say I'm healthy and strong, it goes, no way. But when I form it in the way of a question, what if? And so I want you to just repeat uh, after me these statements. So just speak them out loud as you are doing the havening touch. So what if I could relax every part of this mind? What if I could really be open to each moment as it is with curiosity? What if I could deeply trust that life is unfolding for my highest good? What if I could live without worry or fear? What if I could truly welcome life in each moment just the way it is, whether it brings pleasure or pain? What if I could be as open as a little mouse creature in the flower? What if I knew that even the smallest blade of grass and grain of sand is cared for by life? And so am I. What if I already know how to be in that beautiful state and live from that? So I want to invite all of us to let ourselves fall into the loving, wise arms of life of Source, of our Divine, of Truth, learning to trust more in the process, to open more even if it hurts, even if there is grief, upset, worry, fear or pain or loss, even when we're hung on the cross, even then, to open more, to allow even this world that we have known to fall apart or to change as it is meant to in its unfolding in its own evolution. Trusting that even though we cannot see the bigger picture and it might look like chaos from our perspective, there is a greater order and we are a part of it and we are playing our role just as we need to. So let yourself be loved deeply, all the way, every particle, every aspect. And even though we don't know what will happen in our lives and with this world, our essence is safe, watching with great joy, love and interest to see how it might unfold this grand adventure. So let me end with this favorite quote from the Course in Miracles. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. And we are all like this image. If your eyes are closed, you can open them. So setting our soul free setting ourselves free and release, releasing what no longer serves and accepting that love and freedom. 
here are the examples of, of doing just that through great, great trials. Cut that anchor. Let's fly. Yes. This is our true nature. So, thank you for being here with me and sharing in this special time together. And thank you for your part, the part that you play. It helps me, it helps everyone connected to you. Thank you so much, Angelica. Um, I'm just going to turn off screen share. Do you have that right in front of you? Yes, I do. There you go. There go. Wonderful. Yay. Are we all back together here? Let me go back to um, gallery view. Wow. Thank you, Angelica, for that journey. I feel like we just journeyed. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, did everybody catch the website for Angelica? I think it's Angelica with a K, healingmusic.com. Was that it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So if you would like to connect with Angelica and want more of this beauty and music, that, that's where to find her. Um, I see your comment, Pat. Pat is hoping to get a copy of the cat in the box photo. <laughs> so we'll get your email to uh, Angelica. I don't know who, where that came from. I don't know who the author is, so I can't give credit. I found it somewhere or someone sent it to me. They found it on the internet probably, but I just love that. Yeah. But I, I wanted to just make one very quick announcement. I, <clears throat> Since I figured out all this technology of how to make the music sound on Zoom, I am very open and happy to do uh, little mini concerts online or sound greetings or just a song greeting maybe for someone who isn't feeling well or needs some upliftment little programs and it's all by donation so it's very affordable and just email me and we can make an arrangement for that or someone's birthday or whatever you know yeah because beautiful. people have been so lonely and sometimes we just need a little boost so even one song can be a big boost absolutely do you want to give your email out i know it or can everybody yeah. find it on your website you can find it on the website okay. but it's angelica with a k <laughs> at angelica healing music.com so okay. it's basically like my website but mm -hmm. angelica before the yeah. at and it's all lowercase. Wonderful. Thank you so much, beautiful one. Uh, we appreciate you. And if you know anybody who could really uh, benefit from this message, share it out. Share this link. Uh, we put it on YouTube when we finish. So, um, yeah, you know, sharing the love is important. And we, we have such miraculous yeah. happenings here. So feel free to copy the link and share it out. Um, Let's see here. Paris says, Angelica, I just love when you visit. Yes. And Luinda says, thank you, Angelica. I think it's about embracing and flourishing in the now. Yes. Bob says, that was beautiful. It certainly was. Now, don't miss the workshop, which is happening really soon. What time is it? It's 13 minutes after. So at 1130, we're going to pop on to the Zoom link and have an amazing workshop. So grab a snack, a drink real quick and come back. Um, I, I just have to say one of the, I, I wrote down something you said in your talk and you were talking about being in India and you said, you know, in this moment of all this chaos, I could have a nervous breakdown or I could let go. And then I just fell into the chaos. And I really love that because often in my life, when I've had moments of chaos, I, I think of the cosmos, like out of this chaotic, you know, cataclysmic, ah, we have, look what was birthed and, and what comes from the cosmos. So I think there's purpose to chaos. And um, last summer I was at Crater Lake in Oregon and I was thinking the same thing. It's like this, you know, this catastrophic volcano, which could be viewed very much as chaos, created this, this amazing, you know, lake. So it just created space for something amazing to emerge. And when we remember that, and like, I loved what you said, you know, I could have a nervous breakdown or I could let go and just lean into the, the chaos. And so thank you for that reminder. It was really, really beautiful. So many beautiful reminders in this message today. So um, definitely share it out. 
Luinda said, oh yeah, I read that one. Okay, thank you everybody. So Angelica, do you wanna say a quick little bit about the workshop that's coming up in just a few minutes that nobody wants to miss? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically I will take us through um, process of going through all the different energy centers in the body and toning with the energy centers. There are specific vibrations, specific mantras that can free and open and tune up these energy centers and when they flow when they when they open they're invisible centers within our spine there is a spiritual spine and when the energy gets unblocked and flows we our kundalini energy our life force energy can rise and activate the glands in the brain the the pituitary and the pineal gland and that actually opens the crown and it opens us to experiencing the connection mm -hmm. to our divinity and so it's an experiential thing but i also between the um uh, the sounds for the energy centers i will i picked some very powerful sanskrit prayers that i will teach you and tell you the meaning that will enhance that opening for each of the centers so it'll be mostly in sanskrit and we'll be chanting together and singing and um, we'll, we'll be very in a very different state after than we are before, probably. So. Wow, wonderful. Well, I can't That's wait. So true. I look forward to seeing everybody there in just a few minutes. It's an hour, um, 1130 to 1230. So, so plan to be there. Thank you, Angelica, for being with us today and, and just sharing your, your presence. We feel it and we are so grateful. Everybody, if your spirit, your mind, your heart feel touched, nourished, loved up, expanded by our community, please consider visiting our Ways to Give page on our website or our giving page. Just click giving, brentwoodilc.org. Our center is 100% supported by your generous contributions, and we thank you for that outpouring of love. Um, it enables us to keep, continue reaching far and wide with our message of love and inspiration and touching lives. So. Much, much gratitude. I'm going to close us with the prayer of transformation and then pop over to our Zoom link on our website, brentwoodilc.org. There's the link to get right into the workshop. I will see you there. The light of God surrounds us. I am light. The love of God enfolds us. I am love. The power of God directs us. I am power. The presence of God watches over us. I am presence. Wherever we are, God is and always shall be. And we are divine. You are divine beings of love and light. So go shine on bright ones. I love you so dearly. I will see you here next week. Same time. It's a date. Mwah. Thank you, Angelica. We love you.